This is Endurance Nation. Free resource alert. Hey, do you struggle to be consistent with your training? Do you have high aspirations, but they don't turn into reality when you're there on the ground training? Are you finding that your fitness goes up and down just like every time you hop on the scale? It's because not because you're poorly organized, not because you don't have the energy or the motivation. It's because you don't have the right habits in place. The most successful athletes that we have worked with over the past 17 years have built a lifestyle of habits that empower them to stay on track with their training and keep them going through the highs and the lows. You need something beyond motivation to keep you going. And that's what our habits are for. You can access some of these key habits, take the framework, take the template and the scripts, use it in your own life. You can get it for free online. If you go to endurancenation.us forward slash habits, Download the PDF resource, get up to speed quickly. It's not you, it's your habits. And we've got the fix. Endurance Nation. Hey, hey, Coach Patrick here from Endurance Nation, back with another episode. Excited to have you join me here on the on the podcast, on the video cast. Those of you watching on YouTube, see I've got a little... A little, little dark motif going on today. A little chilly up here in the attic as the uh, cold snap hits most of the U.S. Wherever you are, you're probably freezing right now. I um, so hope you're staying warm, safe, healthy, uh, making the most of the new year. Uh, today, I want to talk to you a little bit about toughness. Not just toughness about dealing with the cold or the elements, but conceptions of toughness and how they often lead us astray as endurance athletes. Uh, and this is largely in part to sort of the mythology that goes into endurance events where we you know, hear stories or we read books of people who've, uh, you know, um, done incredible things, super inspiring, um, or perhaps survived ordeals, you know, adventures that turned into, you know, sort of like life threatening moments that people overcame. Um, and we also hear warning signs. We have people who, um, you know, didn't do, didn't turn out so well, right? The hike that turned out to be a disaster. Um, and uh, there's sort of like a fine line, it appears to be, at least on the surface, between toughness that works out and toughness that leads to disaster. What we don't really talk about is sort of that messy middle. Uh, not everyone in the middle between those two extremes isn't tough. And in fact, uh, there's a new book out, Do Hard Things by Steve Magnus, which is sort of the inspiration for this podcast um, that helps ordinary people like you and I grapple with the concept of what it means to be tough and appropriately tough. Like, And the key part about it for me is getting away from some of these social stereotypes. So inside the station, we talk all the time, like work is speed, entering the body, do the work, do the intervals, be focused, stay tight. You know, like uh, you're one thing, you know, nothing matters for the line, stay inside your box. So it's very rigid like that. And people mistake that for toughness. The rigidity is actually a function of simplicity. We're trying to give you very clear instructions. So when everything goes wrong, you know, stay inside your box. It's very simple to remember. um, And it's very easy to do inside my box. I got it. You know, if I said, leave all those challenging voices inside your head behind and don't listen to the person over there who just told you to do this thing, because you know that like you've already tuned me out, right? Like it's already, you've already gone. You've, you've run past me. You've ridden past me. Uh, I had my moment with you coming out of the locker room and that was it. I missed it. I missed my moment. I've only got a small moment in time in which I can say something that's going to have meaning and impact and empower you or me or the person listening to make a decision that, ma- that works out really well. And to me, that's what toughness is really about. Toughness is about being as clear as possible and as disciplined as possible in the most critical moments. So let's take it back to a workout. Most people think toughness is doing intervals and then the interval gets difficult and we we push through it. Maybe we waver. Sometimes we don't get to complete the workout. Others times we do. And the differential between those two, we often assign to toughness. Oh, I was super tough today. Like I forced through, I, I tricked myself. I did something. I just got that work done. I, I hit the intervals like, hoorah, I did it. Awesome. That's fantastic. Like super good for you. But that wasn't necessarily just because you were tougher and you were less tough the other day. There certainly were some things that you did differently this time than you did the other day, or perhaps inverse, you did last time and you didn't do this time. Um, But the key part is that did toughness happen? Absolutely. There was a point in time, if we took a 20 minute interval, usually for me, it's about 13 minutes, uh, where toughness is required. Like that is the moment. That is the moment where the discomfort level rises above what's tolerable and starts to creep into the space that we normally reserve for, you know, higher level cognition, planning, strategy, all of those things. And when that discomfort and challenge pushes up into that area, 
we have to act swiftly and decisively to make sure that we stay focused. And this takes practice, which is a large part of what Steve talks about in his book. And that's a large part of what I want to talk to you about today, which is that it's not being tough all the time. You're not a WWE, WWF, or, or whatever wrestler. or not a bodybuilder who goes on the circuit and, and apparently is ripped every single day of the year like your favorite Instagram follows. Uh, that's not the case at all. In fact, most people, even the most amazing people, are just ordinary human beings. Um, and what makes people stand out is not that they're um, tough and awesome all the time, but they're tough when it matters most, right? So I don't need you to be the most amazing friend, but when I call you and I need you to help me like get this tree off my property or help me with my dog to get to the ER room and you're the person who answers, that's all that I need, right? When I, when I needed it, I had the answer. I found you. That was fantastic. And that's the same thing we're trying to cultivate with our inner selves as well. So really, again, focusing on that concept of toughness is being time bound. The ability to make clear and decisive decisions when it matters most. So first and foremost, here are three things that Steve talks about. First and foremost, he talks about being, being positive, but being practical. So as you head into moments where you know things are going to get tough, and after a while, as an inner self, you kind of got a good sense. This you know, long run before my marathon, it's going to be tough. So you can be positive, and practical, right? So we want those to be together, right? So specifically, you can say like, this is going to be a great run. I'm going to do really well as long as I stay with my nutrition, right? Like, or, or you know, I'm going to have, a, I'm going to, I'm going to crush this run. It's going to be awesome. That's sounds great. Sounds awesome. Right. But also just like, Hey, um, if you were able to run eight fifteens, that would be crushing this run. Like, Hey, my, you know, I want to have a great run today. My goal stay, you know, plus or minus five seconds on eight fifteens. Awesome. That'd be a great run. Right. So we're, we're, we're saying the positive thing and we're getting the sort of like internal, like good vibes for doing the positive thing. We're also being practical that we're not being um, irresponsible with the advice that we're giving ourselves. And we're not being uh, outlandish, if you will, with the voices inside of our head. If, if we inside of our head are being like, get some, go after it, like crush all the enemies. Um, that sounds like great, like lots of energy, but just like an energy drink, it just gives you a boost and it's gone. And when that's not going to be there <laughs> when you need it, when it's tough. So let's be positive, but also practical right? Really helpful. So like if you had a friend who was tightrope walking between two New York City skyscrapers, you don't want to be like, get out there and just fly like a bird across the, like, what are you going to say? You have no idea what to say to a tightrope walker, but you could be positive. Like, Hey, you're going to do this. I know you can. I trust you. I believe in you. You've done so much hard work and practical. Hey, let's steady hands, right? Loose fingers. Let's go, right? That's positive and practical. You can find that balance no matter where you are. Okay. Second point here, talk to yourself. This is actually really important. Some of the highest performing athletes in the world actually spend a fair amount of time talking to themselves. Um, and they'll be talking through scenarios. They'll be planning what they're going to do when they go into that session. So if I've got a set of tough intervals tomorrow, I have started having a conversation with myself the night before. Hey, tomorrow, those two by 20s, that's going to be tough. Like, what am I going to do? How am I doing? And I have to kind of mentally ease myself into that place, just like you might do in competition. You have a sense that these things are coming up. And the way that we prepare is not just easing ourselves into that session or to that event, but also to build the dialogue within ourselves of, of how we talk to ourselves, like getting comfortable talking to yourself. Because when things get tough in those decisive moments, guess what? There's a shouting match going on between these two years, right? Am I right? Like, you've been there. I know you've been there when you're like, do I stop? Do I walk? Do I run? Do, do I go off the course? Do I stay on the course? Where are you? My 20-year endurance career is full of moments where I was like, I really just want to ride my bicycle into that drainage ditch and tell everyone it was an unfortunate accident so I could stop. Like that is very, it sounds, it sounds dramatic. Sometimes I could be a little histrionic, but really it's actually a function of those voices inside our head having a battle with each other, right? And so being comfortable inside the space and being comfortable in the dialogue is really great. And in fact, helping those voices prepare for that event in a way, if you will, um, by having conversations early about the work you can do is actually a massive unlock. So get really comfortable talking to yourself. And then remember, be positive, but practical in those spaces. And the third tip that Steve gives, which I think is actually really fantastic, is talking in the you, right? Actual you. So instead of saying, I'm going to crush this workout or I'm going to have an awesome day, you, hey, you right there are going to have an awesome day. Bonus, someone actually overhears you talking to yourself, but you're saying you think you're talking about them. Hey, you're not a crazy person. Um, no, seriously though. Um, what it does is it actually um, creates that sense of that external um, yet supportive voice and perspective. And in many ways, when, when times get tough, having the ability to divorce yourself from the moment and be a decision maker and an actor Working in parallel paths, but independent of one another is a critical success factor. Um, uh, an accident happens. Two cars crash in the road in front of you. You can stand there and be like, oh my God, human body parts, terrible disaster. Look at this whole thing going. I can't believe like the shock overwhelmed me. Somebody needs to call 911. Who's going to do it? 
you can do it if you're able to be outside of that space and you've trained yourself. You've said, hey, when there's an accident and I am right there, I call 911. And not just I call 911, but you call 911. I tell my kids you call 911 and you call 911, pointing back at myself right now. Woo! Um, because it actually trains you in that space of being able to give direction and also be able to hear that right? So it takes it out of just me because if I tell myself that I am going to be tough today and I'm not tough today, then I'm saying I'm not tough, right? Then I'm, I'm having this sort of irreconcilable difference of like, I'm, I said I was tough, but actually it turns out, looks like from what happened, I'm not so tough. Toughness at the end of the day is, is a journey. It's not a destination. And it's learning how to talk to yourself and manage these tough spaces that happen both athletically, which is like the safe place for all of us to play, but also personally, interpersonally, uh, professionally, you know, emotionally, perhaps with family as well, there's going to be tough moments. And part of what the benefit of endurance athletics is, is it gives you a playground through which you can get to know yourself, have these tough conversations, uh, become better and smarter at dealing with these challenges on a repeat basis. It's socially acceptable to bring yourself right to the edge of toughness multiple times a year, as long as you have the budget. Um, and that's one of the, my favorite parts about it. In fact, you'll find that athletes who continue to come back after five, 10 years of racing, who continue to race and challenge themselves, we kind of like that moment where things are up in the air and where we have to be tough in those moments. We seek those out. A day without a moment for toughness can often be just a regular day, which is fine in most cases, but sometimes might seem to be a little bit lacking. I'm not suggesting that you go out there and seek out disaster or mayhem in order to sort of release your inner strengths, but I do want you to recognize that being comfortable in these critical moments can actually be a difference maker for you, not only with your training and your overall life, but also on race day when it matters most. Oftentimes when we have a poor race, we'll say, ah, something went wrong, or I didn't do my training right, or I didn't taper right. But it also can very well be that in that moment when it was super tough, you didn't have an answer. You couldn't, you couldn't come back with what it was to meant to push through. And as I've noticed athletes over time, when I work with them for five, 10 years, I've had the honor of working with some athletes for almost 20 years now. Um, they get much, much better at the mental game, right? And the better you are at the mental game, the better you're going to be at the physical game. So when I talk about smart is the new faster, it's about being in touch with the intellectual side, being comfortable in that dialogue with yourself, understanding your limits and challenging those appropriately. Um, and also being able to do that in the context of supporting others as well. And that that networked effect of having that happen inside Endurance Station is one of those secret advantages that we have. So if you haven't already, I recommend you check out Two Hard Things by Steve Magnus. Really well done, uh, for sure, and a great um, primer for thinking about how to be appropriately tough when it matters most. Um, I think it's a good book for you to read, also just to share and gift out, because others will also benefit from that message. And I wish you the best of luck. If you've got questions about this concept um, or want to learn more about how I or others on the team uh, wrestle with this, you know, uh, challenging moment, these decisive points in time, go ahead, check us out. EnduranceNation.us. You come in there, you go to forward slash apply or click join when you're on the website and you can fill out an application. We'd love to interview you. See if you're a good fit, bring you on the team uh, and have you join us for our key races for 2024 and beyond or our training camps or whatever it may be. We're on this journey. We've been here for a long time. We're still going, always learning, always getting better, trying to find that way to be just a little bit tougher this year than I was in the years past. Might not be faster, but looking for that toughness. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Hope you have a great, fantastic week. I'll talk to you soon. Be well. Endurance Nation. Did you know that we hold training camps every year? And not just ordinary training camps, but training camps internationally as well. This week, I want to talk to you about our Mallorca training camp. We are going into our seventh year of hosting camps in Mallorca, a spring journey, a sojourn in April of teammates new and teammates to be who come together to enjoy this magical island, the home of cycling in Europe. This is your chance to join us for a guided tour. We base ourselves out of Port Paenza. It's a fantastic environment. We have a great guiding crew. There's different levels based on different abilities. So there's no pressure for you to ride faster than you want. We have five or up to seven days, depending which option you choose, of incredible cycling options. We're at the base of the Tramontana Mountains. So you can go left to stay flat, or you can go right to go up, or you can do some combination thereof. Enjoy some incredible Spanish cuisine, Spanish wine, great friends, and a good time by checking out our Mallorca camp. All of our camps, including the Mallorca camp, live online at Mile18. You can find them at www.mile18inc.com. That's mile18inc.com. For more information about Endurance Nation, visit us online at endurancenation.us.
The provided music is from the Podshow Podsafe Music Network. Check it out at music.podshow.com. Thank you.